So in today's video I'm gonna show you Keylogger that I create and it's source code as well. But before that, we need to know what Keylogger actually is. So what is Keylogger? Keylogger is also known as Keystroke Logging. It's a type of malicious software or malware that can detect any keystroke as you type. It can take the information and sends it to the hacker via network and then the information is stored to the database and viewed by the hacker. Why they even exist? Well, very often Keyloggers are used for stealing somebody's login details such as username, password, email or any kind of personal data. Obviously with those those informations, a hacker can take advantage of them and can cause damage. We are not talking about damage of the device, but rather <laughs> outside. Yeah, so if you don't use any kind of a double authentication, please start to use it because these little applications can be stored everywhere and you don't even know about them. But are they always illegal? When it comes to Keylogger, people might think that it is always a type of malware that steals information, but that's not actually in every case. Keylogger can be Im implemented inside the operating system such as Windows. For instance, it can be useful for user experience. Instead of searching for some words multiple times, we can store some keywords to make it more easier to navigate for them in the future. And that's why some keywords pop up when you try to search for something in the Explorer. Another example of legal keylogger is social media. For example, YouTube use its own keylogger based on what other people search for the most. By implementing the keylogger, the software or platform can make experience for a user much smoother and easier. What else social media or platforms do with these informations? Well, platforms which storing the data usually sends them to other platforms. That's why when you searched for something a couple days ago, let's say you searched for a burger, maybe you will get some advertisement according to that specific keyword. Of course, this is not a legal action because these platforms which sends the data always have to inform the user that they will use them for commercial purposes. If the user agree, these platforms are allowed to use the data for these purposes. But uh, we want to discover the other side, of course, because we are on the Cyber Soldier channel and we want to talk about malwares and illegal stuff. So, the definition of illegal keylogger or what is actually a legal keylogger? Simply put, if a keylogger is installed behind the back of the actual owner to steal data, it is legal. And we also divide keyloggers to hardware based, they are not very common for obvious reasons, and software based keyloggers. So, let's first dive right into hardware based keylogger. So, what is it? is a typically a small USB device that is directly connected to physical hardware. For example, it can be used oh, no. by companies which wants to be aware of what their employees type. Maybe some lazy as douchebags just use ChatGPT instead of actually writing stuff, you know. Or it can be used for personal use. For example, if parents want to know what their children types on day-to-day -day basis. Let's talk about some advantages of hardware keylogger. Unlike software-based keylogger, the hardware keylogger can track keystrokes even though the device is not fully prepared. That means this keylogger can track keys even when the user is in the BIOS. But I don't think that this can be useful for any malicious purposes and not even legal purposes because what you can type in BIOS, I don't know, like password to a BIOS? I don't think this is very useful, but it's it's a fun fact, you know? Why they sucks? They are difficult to connect them. Yes, you need the actual physical device. No shit. The second reason, they can be recognized by antivirus software. Yeah, the hardware keylogger can be also, believe me or not, detected by antivirus software or by a victim because, oh no. yeah, it's it's just a USB device. And the third point is they cost fucking money. Yes, these small devices are not for like very cheap prices. For example, this device just for 30 what euros? Like, come on, man. And that's why we're gonna talk about software based keyloggers because you can get it for free. Now, like hardware based keylogger, the software keylogger, obviously from the name you can know or you can guess, is running on device like any other application. They are using a specific hooks which are called every time when the keystroke is pressed. Most of the time they are running in the background, so for a common user it might be almost impossible to recognize them. So how can they be even installed? Well, there are various methods, as for example via cracked applications. Well, the creator of the cracked so-called pirate application can just oh no. add some extra into it without receiver knowledge. Sometimes the crack itself might not even work, it can just throw some sort of 
of fake error message to trick the user, but meanwhile, behind the back, something can be installing. And believe me or not, these are very effective. I'm gonna just tell you example. Maybe you want a free Adobe Photoshop. You don't have budget for it, so you just search on YouTube for some crack uh, for this Adobe Photoshop. You found video that seems to be legit. You follow the instruction and you download it. You also see the comments that says that, yeah, it's legit, it's good, it's working. Then you install it. Of course, you run it as an administrator for <laughs> obvious reasons. And yeah, the application works fine, but you don't know that the author of this crack may be at some exe backdoor, you know, some application that can just run in the background and you don't even know about it. And this application can be called, for example, Microsoft something. And when you search for it in the task manager, you will see just some random Microsoft uh, application. And for common user, it might be very tricky because they might think that, oh, but it's actually from Microsoft. So this is not even a malware. And that's what these uh, malwares do. They just name the file to something legit. And you can oh, get that. infected by that's email. That. We call this action phishing. Well, the attacker can trick the user via scam email, but nowadays a lot of email services like Google use advanced filters that can mark it as a spam and warn the user in advance. In most cases, you will not click on it. So this method is not like very successful. It's really obvious. So another method is by exploits. You might get one off through some sketchy websites. You don't even have to like download anything from the website. But some websites might uh, like contain malicious scripts that can uh, like silently install some sort of exe application and you don't even know about it. This method oh, no. is very dangerous. But nowadays a lot of web browsers have advanced protection against these exploits. It's very rare, but it's possible. Like seriously, don't even think about these sites and if you get somehow this exe file please like immediately delete it because these files especially with these names are always scam please don't click on these applications don't even run it as uh, administrator like please don't do it this may surprise you but the phones can be also infected it can be even more yeah, fucked up yeah, than why? infected pc because you probably spend more time on it for instance it can uh, spy on you when you messaging on social media and the uh, attacker can get some spicy information Information, you know, some spicy data from it. Which form of malware it can be? Well, first form of malware and the most common is the Trojan horse. Usually it's installed by a user himself, but without knowing its malicious behavior. It can be that correct application or just non-trust one or just an unknown application. So another type of malware is Worm. It's a small program that replicates itself and spread to other devices. It usually like abuse some some network exploits. The last are viruses and rats. It's a form of malware that replicates itself to other programs and changes the program code. Simply put, it is running when the infected program has been launched. And these are very annoying because these viruses and rats can like infect the wall drive. So each exe application will be injected with the malicious code. Okay, enough theory, let's dive right into source code. For today's video I prepared a simple keylogger based on WinAPI also known as Windows Application Programming Interface, created in C Sharp. It is not an advanced one, but it works as a keylogger. But before revealing the source code, I must say that everything was created for education purposes only. I just want to show you how these keyloggers work. By knowing how keyloggers work, you will also know how to get rid of them and prevent to give any personal data to the hacker or any kind of attacker, it doesn't matter. So let's start with the main class. So here I wrote some paths for our keylogger. So the current file is a string for our application location, including file path as well. Current name is just a name of our application without path. A hidden directory represents the hidden folder in which our keylogger will be copied. And the new file is a string that will be our new copy of, that will represent our new copy of our keylogger. So let's just uh, build a file dropper for this keylogger. Here we will check if the directory even exists. If the directory doesn't exist, we're gonna create one with hidden option. Next if statement will just check if the file in our output directory exists. If it's true, then we're gonna just return the condition. If the file doesn't exist, then we're gonna create it with the hidden option as well. At the end of the function, we're gonna create a new registry key for a startup. Thanks to this key, the keylogger will start automatically 
only when the user log in. So back to the main function. Test class is gonna be very important because it will take care of keystroke tracking. I had no idea how to name this class, so don't ask me for it. So for this operation, we need to set up keystroke hooks. However, we will not use net framework, but rather win API. Because we will not work with the net framework, we need to, in advance, set up some DL imports. Set windows hook X. Thanks to this function, we will set hooks specially for keystrokes. This will create a hook. Call next hook X will pass the hook information to the next hook. And load library. This function loads the specific module. In our case, it is gonna be user32. Get async key state. Determines whether a key is up or down. Keyboard all allows you to monitor keyboard input events. Level keyboard process will be used with the set windows hook. This function will be called when the new key input has been detected. In key log file, this will be just text file uh, that will store the data. This function basically start the keyboard tracking hook. For the well functioning, we need to define the module user32 and set the hook process. If the keyboard pressed is not detected, we just gonna return the function. Then we gonna get every key. S key N will be used for letters and key P, this boolean will determine whether the specific key has been pressed. Next, we need to check if the txt file is even created. If not, then we will create one. Test writer will write every key character into txt file. Then we need uh, this for each loop for the key detection. If the key has been pressed, we gonna write it into txt file. However, not every key represents number or digits. So if it's, uh, for example, a space button, the key logger will write it into the file with square brackets to make it more clear. And finally, we're gonna call to the next hook back to the main class then we're gonna check if the next copy of the keylogger is running if not then we gonna confuse the user by creating a fake error message every time when the application has been launched and then create a new copy of keylogger the first copy is just for setting values and dropping and I hope it's clear for you. If it's not clear for you, if you don't understand something, you can leave the comment below. And that's pretty much it from the programming side. So let's nice. test our keylogger. For the demonstration, I choose Windows 8.1. I tried to use Windows 11 instead, but it didn't work well due to some performance issues. This variant of keylogger doesn't use any kind of network connection. It's uh, completely offline and it uh, doesn't even send the information anywhere. Okay, enough talk and let's go ahead. Okay, so let's launch the program. Look at this error message. Does it look real, doesn't it? At this moment, the keylogger has been launched and it is ready to detect any key press. So let's check what's happening in the task manager. Can you guess which process infected? If you choose Microsoft Session Manager, you are correct. And let me just show you where the process is located. Oh, that's weird. Where it is though? Well, if you remember, I set the file attribute as to hidden, so we need to enable hidden files in folder options. And here we go. Every key pressed will be stored in kdata. So let's just write something. As you can see, the file size has been increased by one kilobyte, so something is monitoring. Here you can see every key that has been pressed. And that's pretty much it how this keylogger works. And yeah, let's remove it as well. So I'm just gonna show you a quick removal tutorial. Because this is the, this is not a very advanced keylogger, it will be very easy to remove. So first we need to erase the keylogger from startup. Also don't forget to end the process. Okay, so we successfully remove it from task manager, but in some cases task manager sometimes doesn't work. So I'm gonna show you the other way via registry editor. To remove it from registry, just follow this path.
Now we can delete the program completely. Now we successfully removed the keylogger and you are safe. And if you are still watching this video, thank you so much. It took me a lot of hours to make it. If you like this video, don't forget to leave subscribe, like and comment. Also check out these videos as well. See you in the next video.